we'll begin. Uh, yes, good day. But uh, should I do like uh, simultaneous translation for both the language, or how should I do? Well, you. When when you're translating, they will they will be translating Chinese. Uh, okay. I will speak. Oh. I'll speak, and after when you start translating, they will speak Chinese. But okay. but this, there should be two channels, you know. So it's going on. The Chinese and the Thai goes on at the same time. Uh, but do you want to hear me translating or not? Yeah, well, I have to hear because I don't know when you stop. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Recording in progress. Mm -hmm. Then I will add one more Nepali here. We're going to have Nepali translation as well? Yes. Who's going to do that? Huh? Ruksana Madhudi. The student Ruk from... Ruksana. Okay, Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesma Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Precharine Nirvisesha sunyavari paschatya deshatarine Vancha kalpata rubyascha kripa sindu bayevacha patita nam pavane bio vaishnavibyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're going to, we're speaking on the Sri Ishopanishad. Can you share the screen with me, Arjuna? Yeah. All right, so we're speaking on the Sri Upanishad this evening. We're beginning mantra number 14. So we'll begin by chanting the Sanskrit. <laughs> Vinashina mrityam dirva sambudyam mritam ashnate. We'll chant again. Sambutim cha vinashyam cha yastat vedo bayam saha vinashina mrityam dirva sambudyam mritam ashnate. Sambuttim cha vinashyam cha yastad vedo payam saha vinashinam rityam tirva sambuttyam ritam ashnate. Translation One should know perfectly the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and his transcendental name, form, qualities and pastimes, as well as the temporary material creation with its temporary demigods, men and animals. When one knows these, he surpasses death and the ephemeral cosmic manifestation with it, and in the eternal kingdom of God he enjoys his eternal life of bliss and knowledge. คำแปล
เราควรรู้องค์พระพวานสิริกฤษณาพระนามรูปลักษณ์คุณสมบัติและลีลาทิพย์ของพระองค์โดยสมบูรณ์รวมทั้งการสร้างทางวัตถุที่ไม่ถาวรพร้อมทั้งเหล่าเทวดามนุษย์และสัตว์ที่ไม่ถาวรเมื่อรู้สิ่งเหล่านี้แล้วจะข้ามพ้นทั้งความตายและปรากฏการทางจักรวาลที่ไม่ถาวรและที่อาณาจักรนิรันดรขององค์พระขวานเราจะรื่นเริงกับชีวิตอมตะนิรันดรแห่งความปลื้มปิติสุขทิพและความรู้ Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada By its so-called advancement of knowledge, human civilization has created many material things, including spaceships and atomic energy. ธรรมธิบายโดยศิลปวานจากสิ่งสมมติว่าเป็นความเจริญก้าวหน้าทางความรู้ความเจริญก้าวหน้าของมนุษย์ได้สร้างสิ่งของวัตถุมากมายรวมทั้งจรวดและพลังงาน Yet it has failed to create a situation in which people need not die, take birth again, become old, or suffer from disease. แต่ถึงกระนั้นก็ไม่สามารถสร้างเสรีภาพจากการแก่ความเกิดการเกิดโรคภัยไข้เจ็บและความตายได้ที่ไหนที่มีโอเคก่อนยัง Whenever an intelligent man raises the question of these material of these miseries Before a so-called scientist, the scientist very cleverly replies that material science is progressing, and that ultimately it will be possible to to render man deathless, ageless, and diseaseless. เมื่อใดที่คนมีปัญญาถามถึงความทุกข์เหล่านี้ต่อหน้าพวกที่สมมติว่าเป็นนักวิทยาศาสตร์พวกเขาจะตอบอย่างฉลาดว่านักวิทยาศาสตร์ทางวัตถุกําลังเจริญก้าวหน้าและในที่สุดอาจจะเป็นไปได้ที่จะทําให้มนุษย์ไม่ต้องตายและไม่ต้องแก่ Such answers prove the scientist's gross ignorance of material nature. คำตอบเหล่านี้พิสูจน์ให้เห็นถึงความโง่เขลาของนักวิทยาศาสตร์เกี่ยวกับธรรมชาติวัตถุ In material nature, everyone is under the laws of matter. ในธรรมชาติวัตถุทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างอยู่ภายใต้กฎอันเข้มงวดของวัตถุ Everyone must pass through the six stages of existence. และต้องผ่านหกขั้นตอนในการเปลี่ยนแปลง Take birth, grow. Maintain for some time, produce some byproducts, and then begin to grow old and finally die. คือการเกิดเจริญเติบโตคงอยู่ชั่วขณะสืบพันธุ์หมดตัวและในที่สุดต้องตาย Nobody in this material world can go beyond these six laws. Of transformation. Therefore, no one doesn't matter if they're a demigod, or a man, or an animal, or a plant. No one can survive in forever. No one can live forever in the material world. ฉะนั้นแล้วไม่มีผู้ใดไม่ว่าจะเป็นเทวดามนุษย์สัตว์ต้นไม้หรือใครก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยที่จะอยู่เหนือกฎของโลกวัตถุนี้ได้ So in this first paragraph of the purport, Srila Prabhupada is explaining the foolishness of the materialistic civilization. 
เราะฉะนั้นตรงนี้เนี่ยในย่อหน้าแรกเนี่ยศิลปพันธ์ทรงอธิบายเกี่ยวกับความโมกเคลาของอของการพัฒนาทางโลกวัตถุ they they have made a lot of advancement different technologies new technologies have developed แต่เราจะบอกกันว่าเรามีการพัฒนามากมายใหม่ที่มีเทคโนโลยีอันใหม่ขึ้นมาเยอะแยะมากมาย now everybody can have a hand phone and we can call each other on the other side of the world very quickly แล้วก็สมัยนี้แค่แบบว่ามีมีแค่โทรศัพท์พอก็สามารถทำให้เราเนี่ยอยู่ในอยู่ในอีกมุมหนึ่งของโลกได้แล้ว But at the same time the problem of life is still there the the problem of old age disease and death แต่ว่าปัญหาเดิมเนี่ยมันก็ยังคงมีอยู่ก็คือปัญหาแห่งการได้รับโรคภัยไข้เจ็บแล้วก็ปัญหาที่ต้องมา But material scientists, they're always trying to encourage the people. They tell them very soon, we will make you. You won't have to suffer any disease. But they will encourage us. 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 We will have the formula so that you will not grow old. And they say now people are living longer. They live longer lives now than before. But we see the same miseries are there. For all different forms of life. Even the demigods have to worry about these things, about giving up their body. And we see the animals and the plants. They also age. They also get old, and they also die. ไม่ว่าจะเป็นต้นไม้สัตว์หรือว่าสิ่งมีชีวิตอะไรก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยคือเป็นปัญหาเดียวกันก็คือเขาก็ต้องมีอายุมากขึ้นแล้วก็แก่แล้วก็ตายไปในที่สุด And they also suffer disease. แล้วเขาก็ต้องมีโรคภัยไข้เจ็บด้วยเขาก็มีความทุกข์จากประการนั้น These are the miseries of the material world. So although we, although the world, although we claim we have advanced with new technology, more comfortable living, but the same miseries are there. ถึงแม้ว่าเราจะบอกว่าโลกเนี่ยมันพัฒนาแล้วเรามีการใช้ชีวิตที่มันสะดวกสบายกว่าเดิมอะไรอย่างนี้ก็แล้วแต่เราก็จะแต่ว่ามันก็ยังมีปัญหาเดิมๆอันนี้อยู่ The medical science is working to try to cure the disease, but still, the the doctors themselves are dying. So we have to understand. You cannot counteract. You cannot overcome the laws of the material nature just by material science. The miseries of the material world will remain if you only have, unless you have. A spiritual solution. Only spiritual life can solve the problems. We will read more from Prabhupada's purport. The duration of life varies according to species. 
อายุขายของชีวิตอาจต่างกันตามเผ่าพันธุ์ Lord Brahma the chief living being within the material universe lives for millions and millions of years พระพรหมผู้ซึ่งเป็นหัวหน้าของสิ่งมีชีวิตอยู่ภายในจักรวาลวัตถุนี้ซึ่งมีเวลาอายุขายเนี่ยเป็นร้อยร้อยล้านปี But a tiny germ lives for only a few hours. No, no one, no living entity in the material world can live forever. Uh, Subhad, Subhudya, probably. He he said to me. Yeah, we don't want to hear the Chinese. That's no good. You got to separate mm. that. Yeah, I I changed to Prabhuji already. Okay. 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 So things are everything takes birth, and it's it lives for some time, and then. It grows old and gradually it dies. So this is the law of the material nature. And even the Brahmas in each universe, there's a Lord Brahma. And each of these brahmas in each universe, they all grow old, and they have to die. They have to give up their bodies. So this whole material universe is called the place of death. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes: for one who has taken birth, death is certain. But then, Lord Krishna also continues in the Bhagavad Gita. He said, after. After dying, then one will take birth again. So this is the nature of life in the material world. We take birth, live for some time in a body, and then. We give up. We die. We give up that body. We take another body. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me, Arjuna? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Can you hear me? Your your voice is not coming. Oh, why? Is it breaking? Okay. Okay. Now okay. Okay. Ah, ก็คือบอกว่าใครก็แล้วแต่ที่เกิดมาในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยจะมีชีวิตอยู่ช่วงขณะหนึ่งแล้วก็พอระยะเวลาผ่านไปเขาก็จะสูญสาย And different living entities will live for different amounts of time. We said Brahma lives for millions of years. But the germ will only live for a few hours. But in the course of the few hours, that germ will experience all the different phases of life. Are you hearing me, Archana? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Now I can hear. I don't know why your voice is lost. Okay, now okay. Now okay, g u r a Can you repeat that again? So I'm say, I'm saying that different living in the course of life, 
they will experience all the different phases. Although they don't live for the same amount of time, but within the course of that life, maybe a few hours, they experience taking birth, growing, uh, growing up, and then growing old, and then dying in a few, all in a few hours. สิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยแต่ละคนแต่ละสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยมีอายุไขที่แตกต่างกันแต่ตามเราตามเอ่ออายุไขของเขาเนี่ยทุกสิ
in which we live, that is the inferior energy. Right. The material energy means the different elements of creation like earth, water, fire, air, ether. You can see there's there's no consciousness in the material energy. But the living entities have consciousness. The birds living in the trees, they have consciousness. The dogs, they have consciousness. Even the, even the trees and the flowers have consciousness. And the vegetables, the, the different things which we grow on the land, they are also conscious. So the material world is made by this energy, this this inferior energy, para, the apara prakriti, inferior, apara. And it, it's this material energy which covers our consciousness with ignorance. And because of ignorance, we engage in material activities. We want to enjoy the material world. We think this world is just there for us to enjoy. But we should understand there's another energy, different from the material energy, there is the spiritual energy. The material energy is inferior energy. The living entities, they're actually meant to be the superior energy. And there's a, a superior energy which is the spiritual world. Yeah, there's just the, the spiritual world is Oh, it's made up of this, this, this spiritual energy. The, the, the spiritual world is eternal, it is without death, and it is the kingdom of God. And this this abode, this spiritual world, is described in the Bhagavad Gita in chapter eight. Right there, it is said 
parastasmattu bhavanyo vyakto vyaktat sanatanaha yasa sarveshu bhuteshu nashyatsu na vinashyati. Right? Lord Krishna is describing that there's another, uh, there's another abode beside this material world which is eternal. All the material planets, there are many planets in the universe and the, some are in the upper region of the universe, some are in the lower region of the universe, and some are in the middle. There are planets like the sun and the moon and Venus, and they're all, they're spread throughout the universe. But these planets don't exist forever. They only they only exist for the lifetime of Brahma. They're not eternal. And some planets in the bottom of the universe, the lower planets, they get destroyed after one day of Brahma. And then they're created again the next day. Uh, so every day of Brahma they create the lower planets. But on the higher planets, it's different. Time is also different. Just like time is different, we say one of our years, one year on this planet is equal to only 24 hours on one of the upper planets. So the time scale is different depending on where you are in the universe. In, in the same way, the different ages is also different in different places in the universe. We know there are four ages. There's the four there's the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, Kali Yuga. Or you can say that the golden age, the silver age, the copper age and the iron age. So the Kali Yuga, that is actually, that lasts for 432,000 years. And, and if you add up the four ages, the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga and Kali Yuga, if you add them all up together, then the, the time of the four ages together is 4,320,000 years. Oh no, oh no, 40, 43 million. And twenty two hundred thousand years. 
So that's a time on this planet, but on the higher planets, that time is only 12,000 years. And, 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 one, and the one day of the life of Brahma is equal to that, is equal to the 12,000 years multiplied by 1,000. And then one night of Brahma is the same is the same length of time as the day. So, because in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Aharyat Brahmano Vidu, that a thousand ages taken together is the duration of one day of the life of Brahma. So, yeah, a thousand ages means it, it, it's one age is the, the these four ages taken together, the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, Kali Yuga. That is one Divya Yuga. And so in one day of Brahma you have a thousand times these four ages. You have a thousand Kali Yugas in one day of Brahma. And you have a thousand Satya Yugas, a thousand Treta Yugas, one thousand Dwapari, it's all there in one day of Brahma. And so the, the time of one night of Brahma is the same as one day. So the days and the nights add up and becomes months and years and Lord Brahma lives for 100 years. So you can understand the duration of the life of Brahma is very, very long. But still, at the end of this life, then there's an annihilation. Everything is destroyed. All the universe is vanished. Vanquished. So even you go to the top planet in the universe, Lord Brahma, that there also it gets destroyed at the end of Brahma's life. So there are people, there are different living beings on different planets. Some living beings are on the, the planet of the sun and some are on the planet of the moon. And this planet Earth, this planet Earth is called the planet of death. This is the planet where everybody dies. 
แล้วก็ลูกของเราเนี่ยชื่อโลกแห่งความตายเพราะว่าโลกของเราเนี่ยมันทุกคนคือจบลงกับความตาย And then in the l o r d there's lower planets also, different demons and so on, and they're all in the lower planets of the universe. So at the end of the day of Brahma, all these different lower planets they all get merged into. The water of devastation. There's water at the bottom of the universe, and they all get washed into the water of the universe to get destroyed. Uh, one day of Brahma, right? right? Yes, at the end of one day of Brahma. Okay. Okay. And they remain there for one night. They wait for the night of Brahma to end, and when the next night of when the night of Brahma is over, then the day comes, and then again they're created again. So when the when the night of Brahma comes, all the living beings they all they get they go into the, the they don't have a body they're not manifest anymore. But spiritually, because the soul can never be killed, so spiritually they still exist. So no, no living entity remains alive during the night of Brahma. But spiritually, they're still alive. They, they still, they still, they just don't have a body anymore. And then there's another time at the end of Brahma's life when the whole universe is destroyed. And at the end of Brahma's life, that's when Mahavishnu breathes in, and all the universes enter into the body of Mahavishnu. And then when Mahavishnu breathes out again, that's when the next creation will take place. So this is the nature of the material world. There's always creation and annihilation, and then creation and then annihilation. But there are other planets which never get. There's a, another region, the spiritual world. There's no destruction. Everything is eternally existing. And there are many, many spiritual planets in the spiritual world. And all these planets in the spiritual world, they exist forever. They never get destroyed. And 
They're unknown. But in the material world, at the end of Brahma's life, everything gets destroyed. There are many universes in the material world, and each of them has a Brahma. There's a Brahma in each universe. So this the Brahma is he's just uh, this material world is is like one fourth compared to the spiritual world, which is three fourths. If we compare the spiritual world to the material world, material world is make one fourth and the spiritual world is three fourth. So the material world is called Ekapad Vibhuti. And the spiritual world is called Tripad Vibhuti because the spiritual world is three times the, spirit, the material world. Material world is one fourth, and spiritual world is three fourths. So, Ekapad Vibhuti and, and tri, Tripad Vibhuti. So the spiritual world is tripad vibhuti, three fourths of Krishna's energy. So this is the superior energy. And Lord Krishna lives in the spiritual world. His residence, his eternal abode, is in the spiritual world. If we want to go and see him, we have to have pure devotion. We cannot go just simply by being a great scholar of knowledge, by being a big jnani. Or you may be a mystic yogi. That's also no qualification to see Krishna. And the karmis also, the karmis also want to enjoy the material world. They cannot go to see Krishna. The, the karmis, the, they want to enjoy the material world so they can go up to the heavenly planets. They can go up to Swarga Loka. And they can live there, or they can go the, to the sun or the moon. These are heavenly planets, and they can enjoy there. And there are planets above the heavenly planets. There's planets up in the top of the universe called Maharloka and Tapaloka and Brahmaloka. So the jnanis and the yogis, they can go to these higher planets in the universe. And if they if they if they actually become devotees, if they get devotional service, then they can become qualified to enter into the spiritual world. 
แล้วถ้าเกิดว่าเขาเนี่ยมีคุณสมบัติมากพอแล้วพัฒนาตัวเองขึ้นไปเรื่อยๆเนี่ยเขาก็จะสามารถพัฒนาตัวเองจนไปถึงดาวเคราะห์ทิพย์ได้ Some, some of them who go to higher planets, they may be impersonalists, and they can go into the Brahma Jyoti. They can go into the Brahman. But the devotees, they go to the Vaikuntha planets. But In order to go into Vaikuntha planets, they have to be devotees. They have to be trained in devotional service. We have to be trained how to serve Krishna. If we're not trained, we won't know how to serve Krishna. Mm. If we go to the spiritual world, they will want us to do some service. So, We have to be able to. We have to be trained to know how to serve Krishna. Somebody will cook for Krishna. Somebody will make a flower garland for Krishna. And somebody will sing and dance for Krishna. Someone will help to dress Krishna. There are many services to do in the spiritual world. So, if you want to go back to Godhead, you want to go back home, back to Godhead. You have to be willing to do service. We cannot say, "Oh, I just want to go back to Godhead. I don't want to do service." We have to serve. So we practice serving Krishna here. Just like maybe you serve the deities, you dress the deities. We want to practice using our senses for the service of Krishna. So Prabhupada continues in the purport. He said, Prabhupada says, on the material planets, he said, everyone from Brahma, Lord Brahma, down to the tiny insect like the ant, they're all trying to enjoy the material nature. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada said, this is a material disease. We are thinking there's so many other, the real disease, we are thinking this world is for my enjoyment. But it's not for my enjoyment. It belongs to Krishna. It's for His enjoyment. But we've forgotten Krishna. We're only thinking about our own self. But we forget Krishna. 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 We forget
So Prabhupada said, so long as we have this disease, forgetting Krishna, we have, this is a disease. So, so long as we have that disease, we have to stay in the material world. And we have to change the body again and again. Sometimes we're a man, sometimes we're an animal, sometimes we're a demigod. Sometimes we don't have a body, sometimes it's the night of Brahma or the end of Brahma's life, we don't have a body. And that, that it takes a long time for the night to pass, or it takes a long time after the death of one Brahma before there's another Brahma. So we want to get out of the material world. We want to stop this taking birth and dying. Old age is not very nice. And disease is not very nice. Nobody enjoys these things. You get disease or they give you all the medicine or they stick needles, they give you injections, so many things they do to you. So we have to go, to, to, to get away from these things, we have to go to the spiritual planets. In the spiritual world, we'll get the association of Lord Krishna. Or you may have, you may be the associate with Lord Narayan, who is the expansion from Krishna. So, all of the different planets in the spiritual world, they're all in every planet, in every in the spiritual world, the Lord is there in a different form. There's so many different planets and there's so many different forms of Krishna. Krishna is Ananta Rup. He has many forms. And all of these forms are eternal. And if we go to the spiritual world, we will also have an eternal form. Okay, so we will stop there. Okay, I'll just you'd be near me and hand it to her. Are there any questions today? Oh, yes. Let me come down. Here's the question. Yes. Bhakta. Yes, good lunch. Bhakta Kitty Corn. Tell her. Bhakta Kitty Corn. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Dandavat Panam, please accept my humble obeisances. Our call is 
ตูชีลาปะปูปาดะฮาเลคิสนาครับมาตาจีผมมีข้อสงสัยเกี่ยวกับพระลุดดะครับอยากผมอยากทราบถึงหน้าที่ของพระลุดดะทั้งสิบเอ็ดองค์ในช่วงทำลายล้างจักรวาลครับและมีข้อสงสัยว่าลุดดะทั้งสิบเอ็ดองค์มาจากองค์พระศิวะที่สถิตยอยู่บนไกลาดที่อยู่เหนือโลกวัตถุใช่ไหมครับอยากให้อยากให้คุณลุมหาลาอธิบายตรงนี้นะครับอะไรกันครับอ่า he is asking can you he wants to know more about the eleven rudras that what what is their duty and what they do and are they from the from Lord Shiva uh, from Kailas or yeah which which uh, see Shiva they come from <laughs> well, you can read for yourself in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's described about the creation of the Rudras, that they come from Lord Brahma. Uh, Yeah, you know the pastime that Lord Brahma created the four Kumaras, and he wanted the four Kumaras to help him to procreate the offspring to fill up the universe. ตอนแรกเลยจะสร้างสี่กุมารขึ้นมาแล้วก็ให้สี่กุมารนี้เนี่ยช่วยในการที่จะขยายเผ่าพันธุ์หรือสร้างมันเพิ่มมัน But the four Kumaras told Lord Brahma that we don't want to do that we don't want to get married we don't want to have a family we're just going to stay young we're going to stay young this we're going to keep this ch child's body and they appear like little children แล้วก็แต่ว่าปรากฏว่าพอพวกเขาเนี่ยพอได้อย่างนี้มาเขาจะบอกว่าไม่อยากจะได้ไม่อยากจะโตแล้วพวกเราอยากจะเป็นเด็กตลอดไปขออยู่ในร่างเด็กตลอดไปดีกว่า And they they the oldest in the universe after Lord Brahma they're the oldest they're the oldest sons of Brahma but they look like little children and they don't grow old ความจริงแล้วเนี่ยพวกเขาสี่คนนี้เนี่ยเป็นลูกคนแรกของพระพรมที่แก่มากหมายถึงถ้าแบบว่านับถึงอายุคือแก่มากแต่ว่าจะอยู่ในร่างเด็กตลอด So when the four Kumaras told Lord Brahma that they didn't want to do that Lord Brahma was a bit angry at them แล้วตอนแรกที่เขาบอกว่าไม่อยากจะทำแบบนั้นเนี่ยพระพรมเนี่ยรู้สึกโกรธ Lord Brahma is in charge of the mode of passion He has to do creation in the universe. He is doing the the secondary part of creation. And then from, but, but Lord Brahma, he he tried to control his anger. But from you know he was he was he was not actually yelling or anything. He didn't start shouting or doing any bad thing. But within his mind, he felt angry. He thought that these children, I created these four children. They don't want to help me. They don't want to help me in my service for the Lord. So he was angry at them. <laughs> ลูกเนี่ยสั่งได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้นะจ่ายก็คือตัวอย่างตัวท่านคือกะไว้ว่าจะให้มาช่วยในการสร้างแต่ว่าลูกก็คือแบบไม่ได้แบบนั้นก็เลยรู้สึกโกรธโกรธภายในใจแต่ไม่ได้แสดงพฤติกรรมการโกรธอะไรออกมา So from out of his anger from the forehead Rudra came out แล้วด้วยความโกรธเนี่ยปรากฏว่าทำให้รูดระเนี่ยปรากฏออกมาจากหน้าผากค่ะ Yeah the, this is The Rudra principle. There's a thing called the Rudra principle. I mean, sometimes we see anger in the material world in different forms. Uh, 
ารถเห็นได้ในในโลกวัตถุในรูปแบบของความโกรธ Just like there was a great yogi called Durvasa Muni, he used to get angry sometimes. So some, sometimes the great yogis they get angry. And we see also anger in nature. Sometimes there's a, a big storm, and there'll be a hurricane, a lot of wind. That is the anger principle. Hmm. So this Rudra principle, this is a manifestation of the anger. So it's mentioned there are eleven rudras. Yes. So they give some trouble in the universe. So to, to stop them giving trouble, they go they go to the mountains and they sit and do meditation. I'm not sure of the activities of each of them. But you can read the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Where Lord Shiva, where Rudra appears, the appearance of Rudra. Lord Shiva is a great soul. He is active in all phases of the creation. At the beginning of the creation, he helps. He carries the glance of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu impregnates all the living entities into the material nature at the time of the beginning of the creation. Right, we said that the living entities are unmanifest, they don't have a body, they don't have a, a gross body, they're all unmanifest. But Mahavishnu, because they're all in the body of Mahavishnu, so when the creation begins, Mahavishnu impregnates them, the living entities, by his glance, and they enter into each universe. <laughs> So Lord Shiva, he helps in this, at this time. He carries the glance. He carries the glance of the Lord containing all these living entities and he helps to impregnate them into each of the universes in the material world. Right. 
And, and then sometimes Lord Shiva also helps in the maintenance of the universe. And Lord Shiva will sometimes kill a demon. Sometimes there will be some asura who's giving a lot of trouble in the universe and Lord Shiva will come and kill him. So, of course, we know Lord Brahma is doing the creation and Lord Vishnu is maintaining, but Lord Shiva also helps in both these things, both in creation and in maintenance. And Lord Shiva's main service comes at the time of the dissolution, at the end of the universe. There will, there will be a fire and ev all, everything will be burned up and then there will be a flood and everything will be flooded and all the universes will be destroyed and everything will enter back into Mahavishnu. So it comes from Mahavishnu and it goes back to Mahavishnu. Lord Shiva, he he has his own abode, Kailash. It's between between the material world and the spiritual world. And the Buddhists, they also go there to that place of Lord Shiva. The Buddhists cannot enter into the spiritual world. And the followers of Lord Shiva, they also don't enter into the spiritual world. But there, there are some, there are some followers of Lord Shiva who are devotees and they are Vaishnavas, so they go to the spiritual world. Lord Shiva has his own Sampradaya. Just like Brahma has a Sampradaya and the four Kumaras have a Sampradaya and Lakshmi has a Sampradaya, so Lord Shiva also has a Sampradaya. So there are four Vaishnava Sampradayas. Just like television, you have different channels. You watch something, you know, you, if you have satellite TV, you can watch one channel, you can watch sports on another channel, you can listen to the news on another channel, it will be music. So there are four different sampradayas, four different channels. We are connected in the Brahma sampradaya. But there are some people who are followers of Lord Shiva and they are Vaishnavas. They, they, they want to serve the Supreme Lord and they serve the Supreme Lord Krishna or Vishnu. Uh, 
But with most most followers of Lord Shiva, they worshipped Shiva for material desires. They just want to satisfy their material desires. So sometimes we can see that the followers of Lord Shiva, they're materially opulent. Yeah, the followers of Lord Shiva, they, they are often very rich and they, materially they appear to be successful. But they are also angry, they're lusty, they're greedy, they have a lot of bad qualities. They're not peaceful, they're not happy. But those who are devotees of Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu, they may not be so materially opulent, but they're happy, they're peaceful, they're satisfied. And they know at the end of life they're going back to Godhead. They're going to the spiritual world. But the, the devotees of Lord Shiva, we don't know where they're going to go. They may go to Lord Shiva's planet or they may simply take birth again in the material world. Lord Shiva has two kinds of mercies. There's his cheating, his cheating mercy and his real mercy. His real mercy is to give you love of Godhead, love of Krishna, but his cheating mercy is when he gives you your material desire. Okay, Shai has a question. What is Shai's question? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavakana, please accept my humble obeisances to glory to Zila Prabhupada. Uh, my questions relate um, from uh, and um, we know about um, Lord Shiva is a um, Mahajan. So I confused about um, he lived at the Kailash world. Uh, that uh, there is um, I mean beyond uh, the material world and during uh, under uh, mat uh, sorry spiritual world. So um, how about qualification of um, Lord Shiva about he is beyond uh, material nature or not, Guru Maharaj? Well, yes, we can understand. Lord Shiva is, we say, he's, he's not like an ordinary jiva in the material world. Lord Shiva is close to God. We say Vishnu is like milk and Lord Shiva is like yogurt. So Vishnu can become Shiva, but Lord Shiva never becomes Vishnu. <laughs> ต่างกันก็คือพระศิวะกับพระวิษณุเนี่ยเหมือนกับ 
ตัวอย่างของนมแล้วก็เนยเนยนมเนี่ยเป็นเนยได้แต่เนยไม่สามารถเอ่อโยเกิร์ตก็คือเป็นเป็นโยเกิร์ตได้แต่โยเกิร์ตเนี่ยไม่สามารถเป็นนมได้ So Lord Shiva, as you said, he's a Mahajan. He's one of the twelve Mahajans. We are supposed to follow the Mahajans. So what is the pastime? What is the activities of Lord Shiva? He's actually always remembering the Supreme Lord. He takes the water of the Ganges on his head. The hair of Lord Shiva is always wet with the water of the Ganges. And that water of the Ganges is the water which has washed the lotus feet of the Lord. When the demigods and the demons were churning the ocean of milk to get the nectar of immortality, at that time, at one point, they produced poison, and the whole ocean of nectar became full of poison, and they they had to ask Lord Shiva to drink all the poison. So Lord Shiva came and he drank it all, and that's how he got the name Nilakchala, huh? Nilaka. Nila Kanta, Nila Kanta, blue throat. แล้วก็มีตอนหนึ่งเนี่ยตอนที่เอ่อพาสิวะเนี่ยเอ่อตอนที่เราเทวดาเนี่ยเขาจะเอ่อเจิงเขาเรียกว่าอะไรไม่รู้ภาษาไทยที่เขาจะเจิงสมุดนะเอ่อภูเขาภูเขาแล้วสนิทก็จากนั้นก็จะมียาพิษออกมายาพิษนั้นไม่มีใครจะดื่มกินได้ก็เลยให้พาสิวะไปดื่มกินแต่พาสิวะนั้นก็ดื่มไว้อยู่แค่ตรงคอจนได้ชื่อชนิดพิเศษมาว่านีลาจะไอ้นีลาเนี่ยนีลาจานะใช่ใช่ When Lord Shiva was drinking the the nectar when he was drinking the poison and he 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 dropped a little bit you know he was taking it in his hands to drink it and a few drops fell from his hands and it fell on the ground and that's how we've got creatures like poison snakes and scorpions that they they took that poison which was dropped by Lord Shiva and they carry that poison with them even today and they bite us. They infect us with, inject us with their poison. แล้วก็อันนี้เนี่ยก็บอกถึงแล้วก็เศษที่เหลือมาเศษที่เหลือมาจากจากนั้นเนี่ยก็คือไอเวลาพาสิวะดื่มกินเนี่ยมันก็มียศลงมาแล้วสิ่งที่ยศลงมาเนี่ยมันก็กลายเป็นในรูปแบบของยาพิษหรือมะแรงที่มันมีพิษเยอะๆเนี่ยก็มาจากสิ่งนี้ So we can understand how merciful Lord Shiva is. That he drank all the poison for the benefit of all the demigods and the demons. Ah, we can see that this is the Pasiwa who is helping to do the thing that is a benefit to us, the Lord Shiva. So this is showing the Vaishnava nature of Lord Shiva, that he is very compassionate when he sees other people suffering. This is the nature of Vaishnava. He tries to help them. So we should follow in the footsteps of the great souls like Lord Shiva. We should also be compassionate and try to help the fallen souls. Try to deliver them. That's why we chant Hare Krishna and we distribute prasadam and we try to give mercy everywhere to deliver the fallen souls. So we see also in Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Shiva giving mercy and teaching. The, there's a song of Lord Shiva, and 
how that he del this song glorifying the Supreme Lord can deliver the living entities from conditioned life. So Lord Shiva is easily pleased, but he is also easily angered. You have to be very careful if you approach Lord Shiva. There was the one demon, uh, Vrikasura. Vrikasura. He wanted to get a blessing from Lord Shiva. So he did a lot of austerity and he was cutting flesh off of his body to offer to Lord Shiva. But Lord Shiva was not appearing to give him a blessing. So he decided he would cut his own head off and offer it to Lord Shiva to get blessings. <laughs> so before he could cut his head off, Lord Shiva appeared to him. Because Lord Shiva is compassionate, he felt sorry for him. So Lord Shiva appeared in front of him and said, Yes, what, what do you want? What blessing do you want? So the demon said to Lord Shiva, I want the blessing that whenever I touch someone's head, their head will fall off. So Lord Shiva was very sorry, he felt very sorry, this is a very bad blessing to give someone. But Lord Shiva had to give the blessing to him. So then the demon tried to touch Lord Shiva's head. And the demon was running after Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was running away. The demon says, come back, come back, I want to touch your head, I want to put my hand on your head to make sure this, this blessing works. So Lord Shiva was running, the demon was chasing him, and so then Lord Krishna felt sorry for him. So, because Lord, Vish, Lord Krishna is, Lord Shiva is his devotee, so Krishna is always kind to his devotee. So Krishna came in disguise and he came to that demon. And Lord Krishna said to the demon, he said, what's wrong? Yeah, and the demon said, oh, I just want to touch Lord Shiva's head. He said, he gave me the blessing, anybody's head will fall. I want to touch Lord Shiva's head. And Lord Krishna said, oh, don't believe Lord Shiva. You know, Lord Shiva, he's been acting very funny these days. It's, I don't think it's true. He's tricked you. You can try for yourself. Put your hand on your own head. You'll see. แต่เซเรเนฮะกริชนากะบอกว่าโอ้เจ้ากําลังวิ่งไปไหนอยู่ช้าก่อนเซเรเนฮะบอกอ้าวข้าเนี่ยกําลังวิ่งตัดไล่
So the demon thought, oh, Lord Shiva tricked me. Oh, no. And he put his hand on his head and his head fell off. And this way, Lord Krishna saved the life of Lord Shiva. So sometimes Lord Shiva gives blessings which cause him trouble. So these demons, they, they come to Lord Shiva, just like Ravan, he got blessings also from Lord Shiva. Lord Rama had to come and kill him. All right. Understand, Jaya? Shaya? Yes? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, really nice explanation. <laughs> Wonderful story. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. That's in, that's in the Krishna book. You read the Krishna book, the story is there. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we will stop here now. Thank you, Archana, for your translation. And stand, thank, you. thank the other, thank other devotees also translating. We have Nepali translation going on and also Chinese translation. So thank all the devotees. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Yeah. I will go back to Vrinda Ki. Hare yeah. Krishna.